adventure and intrigue. Fighting monsters out of our league. We'll roll the dice and breathe the nice. A plus two and I might succeed. Well, hey everyone, to... it's uh, Carl again with Tabletop Tango and. I was thinking the other day about a game I played in where I was a little bit disengaged and I was kind of bummed out. Um, I was trying to think about why that was and what was bumming me out about the game that I was playing. And I came across a few things that I think a game master should avoid or shouldn't do to keep the players from getting too bummed out about what's going on. So anyway, I'm again Carl Davis with Tabletop Tango. If you like what you see, uh, subscribe, like, do all that good stuff. Um, it'd be fun to see those numbers go up, but we know we're not going to be internet famous. So let's go ahead and start. And so let's talk about some things that a GM should do to avoid bumming out the players. Uh, first one is uh, never really getting a turn or getting the spotlight. Uh, that was kind of rough in this game. You know, we'd get into a point where some people would kind of carry on, carry on, have a lot of role play opportunity, role playing things out. And meanwhile, there was a set of players who just kind of sat in the background, waited. And when it came our time for our turn or our spotlight, we would we would start, we would do some role playing. And then before you know it, we were back to the other players. And it was kind of, um, you know, it was a bummer. And so we started getting a little disengaged and we started not, you know, being interested in what was going on because it was all about other people. So, that's something to avoid. Uh, second thing is, and I talk about player agency all the time, don't tell the players what they feel. Uh, don't tell the players what they do. Just let the players decide what approaches they're taking. Um, let the players decide what they're going to do, when they're going to do it. It's all about players' agency. It's not the game master's job to... Um, say, hey, you're going here, you're doing that, and then this happens. It's all about the players making those decisions. So again, player agency, a big one. Um, in this game, again, we spent a lot of time with the game master trying to drive, you know, drag us by the nose uh, through what he thought was the right approach to the problem, or even, um, you know, holding us back from the solutions we wanted to do just because it didn't fit his model of what he thought the game should be. So give the players agency. Otherwise, you're going to bum them out. Uh, third, I never really got to explore my character's backstory. You know, the things that were interested, interesting to me, things that I wanted to do in my arc, my character arc. Um, so my character in this game was um, a, uh, a superhero and, you know, had some had some backstory that was tragic. And I wanted to explore how that affected her and what that what that did to make her the kind of um, superhero she was, but never really got a chance to do that. You know, partly the game ended relatively quickly, but I never felt like um, my character was, you know, anything other than kind of secondary to the overall story that was being told about other players. Um, other players' characters had a lot of, um, you know, funny enough, also had a lot of spotlight. Their stories were being, you know, explored. My story was sort of, you know, who cares? And we talked a little bit about this in another video with Eric when we talked about player agency with respect to um, backstories. And my backstory was written very clearly to allow for the game master to pick things out and run with them. Um, you know, I spelled out, here's a thing that's a mystery or here's a thing that I really want my player to figure out or explore. And so it was pretty rich. It was there. Um, and I was just kind of bummed out that we never had a chance to explore any of it. Uh, number four, uh, you know, really don't box the players into a corner. Um, nothing really gets frustrating uh, to a player as if we don't know what we're doing next. We don't know what we're being expected to do. Even in an open world kind of game where, you know, you can do anything you want, you still need a nudge sometimes in the right direction. Does it make sense for us to go out into the wilderness or are we supposed to be exploring the city? Uh, what's Where's the interesting parts, um, you know, that's been set up, ready to go? Um, we're not talking about railroading, just a chance to sort of, um, you know, know the right direction. Uh, related to this is if, you know, the story's going to stop if something happens or a role doesn't go the right way, then don't make, a, you know, people say this all the time, don't make the players roll if the role can cause the game to come off the rails. Uh, you know, this is obvious in kind of investigative type games where if you roll to find the clue and you don't find the clue, then the game is now stalled. Uh, we don't know what to do next. If I need the clue, 
giving a clue. Um, don't frustrate me as a player because I don't know what I need to do next. Um, so again, bums you out. Uh, next, uh, don't say no to the actions or interesting ideas the players have. Um, I mentioned this a little bit uh, in this game we were playing. We were coming up with interesting ways of solving the problem, um, different solutions, and in most cases it was like, well, no, you, that doesn't really work. Okay, well, what about if I do this? Well, okay, that doesn't really work. It's like, come on, uh, you know, the players don't know that one way you think the puzzle should be solved or that one way to proceed from one scene to the next scene. You got to you gotta roll with the punches as far as um, if they come up with a creative solution or a nifty idea, then you really ought to take that as um, a possibility for cool role playing, a cool change to the narrative. Uh, you know, you're not you're not the owner of the story, it's shared between the players and you. And so take advantage of those cool ideas and let the players succeed um, using those. So don't don't say no. And it's not meaning, you know, do that yes and where you're always agreeing what the players say. But if it's creative and it's a cool idea, let it happen. Um, you know, one of the game masters I had did, did a really good job in the sense of, you know, in the superheroes game again, he did a great job. My hero could affect uh, matter and modify matter, and we were attacking a large creature. And I said, well, what if I, you know, change the matter of the support beams over it and collapse the roof on it? Now, you could have easily said, well, no, that's not how your power works. You only can, you know, change matter. Um, so this idea you had of changing matter to, you know, uh, change the, you know, change the uh, support columns to sand or something like that so that that collapses the roof. That You can't really do that because that's not the intent. But it was the intent. I mean, he said, no, that's a great idea. And so my attack that would normally do a little bit of damage because I used a creative idea did a ton of damage and really swung the battle in our, in our favor because he let me be creative and let me make some decisions uh, that maybe weren't what the game was calling for or the module or whatever, but it was something that I figured out. Um, and then, you know, another one, <laughs> another idea is, uh, that's been said a million times is you're not writing a novel, share the narrative. Uh, I mentioned this, let the players help define the story. If you're going to railroad them and you're going to say, no matter what you do, here's what's going to happen. It's going to bum them out. We're going to be frustrated. We're not going to be having a good time. And again, if you wanted to write a novel, then you should have just wrote a novel instead of, uh, you know, having players play a game with you. So these were some of the things that I thought about that were really kind of sticking in my craw when I was playing this game. And, and some were positive in the sense that the Game Master did a good thing. Some of them are, you know, negative, that things that I had experienced that took took away from the experience and you know, kind of bummed me out, made me frustrated, made me say, I, I don't know if I really want to play this game. So again, keep give the players spotlight who, who deserve it over time. Um, don't tell the character what they feel or what they do. You know, keep the player agency. Uh, never, uh, never getting a chance to explore your arc. Just don't do that. Give the players a chance to, you know, explore the things they thought made their character interesting. Um, don't box the players kind of into a corner. If they need a clue, give them a clue. If a role is going to bring everything off the rails, then don't make them take that role. Uh, let them be creative. Uh, don't say no to interesting actions and ideas. Let that unfold the story. You know, players are going to be engaged, having an exciting time because the things they're doing matter. And then last, if you're writing a novel, write a novel. Don't play a role-playing game. So anyway, those were some of the things that I was thinking about the other day as I was uh, reminiscing on some of the games I was playing as a player and not just a GM and what I would have hoped that the Game Master had done more of to make my experience uh, fun, um, exciting, you know, I had an impact, and I wasn't bummed out. So don't bum out your players. Again, this was Carl with Tabletop Tango. Like, subscribe, love to see that. Um, and if you like what you see, just keep watching. Thank you much. Bye. Fighting monsters out of our league. We'll roll the dice and raid the nice. A plus two and I might succeed. Whether Cthulhu or d and Or what's on drive-thru RPG. 
I'll roll the dice and raise the 